Hello everyone, Yellow Mustang here with another Roblox scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be going over multi-threading, utilizing quarantines, spawn, and delay. First you need to understand that multi-threading is the concurrent execution of two or more parts of a program or script to maximize usage of the CPU. Quarantines are some of the most interesting and useful parts of Lua. However, still some of the most misunderstood concepts of Lua scripting. When you make a quarantine, it is like creating a new script in your place. On Roblox, one of the biggest differences in creating a new script and a new quarantine is that a new script's context does not have to be created. In some cases, this can save execution time. Lua offers all of its quarantine functions packed in the quarantine table. The create function creates new quarantines. It has a single argument, a function with the code that the quarantine will run. It returns a value of type thread, which represents the new quarantine. Quite often, the argument to create is an anonymous function. A quarantine can be in one of three states, suspended, running, and dead. When we create a quarantine, it starts in the suspended state. That means that a quarantine does not run its body automatically when we create it. We can check the state of the quarantine with the status function. The function quarantine.resume starts or resumes the execution of a quarantine, changing its state from suspended to running. In this example, the quarantine body simply prints high and terminates, leaving the quarantine in a dead state, from which it cannot return. Until now, quarantines look like nothing more than a complicated way to call functions. The real power of quarantine stems from the yield function, which allows a running quarantine to suspend its execution so that it can be resumed later. Now when we resume this quarantine, it starts its execution and runs until the first yield. If we check its status, we can see that the quarantine is suspended and therefore can be resumed again. From inside the quarantine's point of view, all activity that happens while it is suspended is happening from inside its call to yield. When we resume the quarantine, this call to yield finally returns and the quarantine continues its execution until the next yield or until its end. During the last call to resume, the quarantine body finished the loop and then returned, so the quarantine is dead now. If we try to resume it again, resume returns false plus an error message. Note that the resume runs in a protected mode. Therefore, if there's any error inside of a quarantine, Lua will not show the error message. I will demonstrate this by trying to destroy an object in the workspace without using a quarantine then with a quarantine, and you can see the difference. Luckily for us, the quarantine will return a status of true or false if it runs successfully, along with any error messages. Utilizing this, we can display errors in the output. A useful facility in Lua is that a pair resume yield can exchange data between them. The first resume, which has no corresponding yield waiting for it, passes its extra arguments as arguments to the quarantine main function. A call to resume returns, after the true that signals no error, any arguments pass to the corresponding yield. Finally, when a quarantine ends, any values returned by its main function go to the corresponding resume. Next, we will discuss quarantine.wrap. Like create, wrap creates a new quarantine. Unlike create, wrap does not return the quarantine itself. Instead, it returns a function that, when called, resumes the quarantine. Unlike the original resume, that function does not return an error code as its first result. Instead, it raises the error in case of errors. If you want to add in parameters, just do it like you would with any other function. If you want to, you can easily set up a function to simulate spawn using quarantine.wrap. Usually, quarantine.wrap is simpler to use than quarantine.create. It gives us exactly what we need from a quarantine, a function to resume it. However, it is also less flexible. There is no way to check the status of a quarantine created with wrap. Moreover, we cannot check for errors. Wow, quarantines sound great, but spawn is easier to use, why wouldn't I just use that? 
Well, prior to conducting research for this video, I would have said the same thing. Let me explain. When using spawn, the function will be executed the next time Roblox's task scheduler runs an update cycle. This delay will take at least 29 milliseconds, but arbitrarily can take longer, depending on the target frame rate and various throttling conditions making this an unreliable function. The delay of at least 29 milliseconds can vary greatly. Some developers are reported seeing delays in excess of 15 seconds due to a medium number of threads being resumed. It is now considered a best practice to avoid using spawn, and instead utilize quarantines. Let's compare the creation of a quarantine thread versus a spawn thread. Notice how the quarantine thread is instantly created. Now observe if we run in the same scenario with spawn. Notice the delay? It is minor here because we are in a blank game, but further into development, this delay will worsen. Unfortunately, that brings us to delay. Delay schedules a function to be executed after delay time seconds has passed without yielding the current thread. This function allows multiple Lua threads to be executed in parallel from the same stack. As you can see from this example, delay does not yield the main thread from running. Delay faces the same problems as spawn, and most developers will just recommend using quarantines instead. For an example case of using quarantines, I've got an eyeball set up in workspace that will have attack the figures. We will be utilizing body gyro and body position for the movement of the eye. We first get our local variables set up and then create a function to check distances between parts. I'm still in your After that, we create the find target function to identify humanoids we can zap with our laser. I then create a bindable event to trigger the find target function on demand. Next, I create a function to check if the target is still valid. I also set up a levitate function to ensure the eyeball stays somewhat off the ground. After that I create a function to adjust the body position so it can fly towards the target. In this function if it detects the target has become invalid it will yield the quarantine. Continuing on, I created a laser shooting function that will attack the target so as long as it is valid. Same as before, if the target becomes invalid, it will yield the quarantine. In this function, we check to see if the human has died. If it has, we will use our find target event to instantly queue up a new target. I then declare both our flying and attacking quarantines. Finally, I finish the script off with a while loop to keep everything moving. It will check for a target every 5 seconds, if we do not have a valid target. It also resumes our quarantine if they are suspended, and we have a new valid target to attack. I'm still in your bed You keep your eyes on me but 
Anyways, guys, that ends the uh, quarantine spawn delay tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I certainly did making this video. I learned a lot, did a lot of research, uh, took a lot of time. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.